to manager news, Crystal Palace have renewed uh, Roy Hodgson. Apparently, they looked at other managers and decided uh, that Roy remains their man. Meanwhile, Raf Benitez is going back to La Liga. He's joined Celta Vigo. Steven Gerrard is off to Saudi Arabia. And Patrick Vieira has signed with, oh, with Frank's old side, Strasbourg. And he's signed there till 2026. Now, yesterday, we had Gab's top five most intriguing transfers of the summer so far. Should we get Jules's top Why five not? as well? Uh, well, we got a show to fill. What, what's well. intriguing? What, I need to know what's <laughs> well, well, intriguing. There we go. What's, <laughs> how do you define intriguing? Uh, well, I don't know. How would you define intriguing, Jules? Just, like, full of curiosity, excitement about those players. If you start with Tonali, I know we talked a lot about him already, but just... How long will it take him to adapt to English football, to Newcastle as well? Will he hit the ground running straight away? Well, he, where is he going to play? Yeah. Next to Bruno Guimaraes, a bit deeper, a bit higher up. All of that, I think, is very intriguing with, with what is a very, very good talent. You can do it all, Jules. Don't worry. We're going to have a, we're going to go up for coffee. OK, so, sorry. So, I, th I thought you were going to tee, tee me up. Uh, so, Kai Havertz is the fourth one again. I like the idea that Mikel Arteta has with Havers to play him deeper as a number eight on that left-hand side and not as a force nine or as a centre forward. Again, on paper, it looks good. I think he's got a lot of qualities to play in that position. But let's see, and that's what's very intriguing in this case. Let's see how well he does or not on the pitch when he, when he, uh, when he starts with Arsenal. Christopher Nkunku as a number three, of course, because again, with Pochettino and the, this new era at Chelsea, he's the big signing so far. What is he going to play as a force nine, as a second striker? But who would be the striker with him? Can you play him wide? Can he take the responsibility of being one of the key players for, for Chelsea? Like he was at Leipzig, but taking a step up will be very interesting. And I think also that will shape his future with the French national team. Because if he can step up for Chelsea and take that team back towards the top, I think he will make a big case for Deschamps to, uh, to start him with, with France as well. The second one is Soboslai. The new arrival at Liverpool, I think the idea is a bit like what Arteta and Arsenal are going to try to do with Havertz. The same that Klopp wants to do with Soboslai in the sense that playing him in midfield. So not wide in a 4-4-2 like a Leipzig, for example. Not wide as a winger, where, Chelsea, where Liverpool have already a lot of players. But be more in midfield, using all that energy and that, the physicality that he had and the pace to make those runs from midfield. He's great at taking on players too. I think he can bring a lot to the Liverpool midfield. But if that kind of transition works, if that transformation works, and let's see, let's see even, that's my theory, but Klopp might have another idea, but I, I really believe that he can play him on the right of that midfield three. And then finally, Jude Bellingham, because he's the, not just the biggest transfer in terms of financially and the money, it's, it's an incredible move from Dortmund in Germany where there's not so much exposure, where you can do your thing without, you know, without too much pressure, let's be honest, to go to the, to the biggest club in the world in Real Madrid who are in transition, certainly in midfield, where Cruz and Modric soon are going to go, and that Bellingham is very much seen as the, the heir to those two. Let's see how he does. Again, a bit like Tonali in England, Bellingham in Spain, to get used to a new culture, a new football, a new country, a new league, and a new team as well. It's not going to be easy, but that's very intriguing to see how well he does and how quickly he does. Well done, Jules. Can I, can I, can very good. Say? I just got hypnotised with the music there. Well, <laughs> well we, were, we were all playing. <laughs> you never heard the words. We were playing we're invisible, uh, invisible instruments. We were. we're and, doing but Shaka, what instrument were you playing? He was doing the violin. Why was he doing? The, why are you doing the violin for the accordion? That was a violin. How can that be a violin? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, all of a sudden, what I'm a violin <laughs> expert. What did you say there, Jules? <laughs> <laughs> uh, say it again. Uh, uh, Don, I'm told you're desperate to talk about Strawberry Sly. Uh, not desperate, but he's a player. You say he everyone's a, a player, player Don. <laughs> uh, he's a proper player. He, he is. I've seen a lot of this kid, Dan. Only 22, but like you all said, um, he can play up any position. Um, you know, at Liverpool, where you think he might play. I can't imagine him playing off the left-hand side. Um, Diaz will play there. Salah's got it nailed down on the right side. He's not really a number nine. But deeper going forward, he scores goals. Um, averages probably 15 goals a season. So, again... Unlike what Liverpool have been doing when they had Gini Van Aldem and Jordan Henderson and Fabinho, where they didn't really score, where they serviced the front three. All of a sudden now we've got McAllister, who might get 10, 15 goals, and Sabozlai potentially 15 goals, adding a lot more goals. And he shoots from outside the box. He's got terrific technique. So in terms of, as Jules said there, he can hit the ground running. It's going to block the, way, block the pathway to people like Curtis Jones and maybe Bacetic getting in the team. But listen, when you're at the big clubs, you've got to perform. But... 
talent wise, he is right up there potentially. Why were you putting a face? Sorry? Were you putting a face then when Tom was talking? Me, no. No. <laughs> uh, let's take I'm a look. Afraid, I'm afraid this is the only face I've got. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say, I thought you were going to add something. No, no OK. Uh, let's compare then the two top fives, shall we? Jules's and Gab's. Uh, interestingly, that uh, Gab had Kareem Benzema. I thought you'd have that in your top five. Just for any, any excuse to talk about your BFF. Yeah, but that's not intriguing. He's going to go to a league where he's going to smash it and he's going to be very, very good. This, yeah. I don't know where the intrigue is in Karim Benzema going to Saudi. Oh. What about I'll tell you what, I like Jules's, I like Jules's five way better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jules well. wins that one. Yeah, no yeah. danger. Shaq, who do you give the award to? Jules. <laughs> yeah. Jules? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Maybe you'll be allowed to sit in the big seat. Thank you. You're the intrigue <laughs> transfer <laughs> champion <laughs> this uh, week. Jules, this is the penultimate Gavin Jules podcast. What's going on? You've got the summer off. Well, yeah, at some point we're going, on, we're going to go on holiday. Well, you always go on holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald, Nader, or Robbo will come about. in. Gab is gone for the all winter visiting penguins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jules is away for the spring. <laughs> now everybody's off for the summer. When was the, last, when was the last time the two of them did that? Thing? I oh, have to, we, we have to sit that here and look at true. Don's legs half, half the time. Exactly. Poor Don's got to get to Hammer Smith. Robbo's baldy heat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.